Michael, of course, is an expert in adult and pediatric transplant surgery. His clinical interests include liver transplantation, hepatobiliary surgery. He's performed more liver transplants than any other surgeon in the region. His research explores the application of cellular technology to patient care and health and policy ethics. He's a consultant to the Chinese Ministry of Health to help them transform their transplant system, including the development of a donor system for volunteer citizen deceased donors. And let me then uh, just ask Michael to come and address us on organ transplant in China. Michael, thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Appreciate it. Peter, thank you very much for that great introduction. I'd like to thank Mark for inviting me to give a talk, as well as working with him uh, through the faculty series this year, and obviously the McLean family for uh, supporting all of this and, and much more uh, from the university. Um, this is my conflict of interest slide. Um, I don't think I have any conflict of interests, but ultimately that's for you guys to decide. Um, my uh, work is uh, supported from, uh, by a grant from the China Medical Board and it is to improve the practice and policy of transplantation in China. Um, it was initially funded in 2007 and uh, refunded in 2011. <clears throat> As a surgeon, I'm frequently asked when I, I, uh, I tell them that I do work in, in China and I'm a transplant surgeon, the, the uh, most common response is, oh, do you go over there and do transplants? So I, right off the bat, I'll tell you that no, I do not. And, uh, once again, I thank Peter for um, really helping define exactly what I am doing there. Um, my goal is not to go over and do a transplant, not really uh, uh, to teach them how to do transplants, to, but to revolutionize the transplant uh, practice in China. And so uh, from that um, paradigm uh, is really from which I work and, and uh, try to improve things in China. <clears throat> so. Um, what are the ethical issues uh, that focus uh, our attention in uh, transplantation in China? And I've uh, divided these for the, the fellows into the typical uh, clinical medical ethics paradigm of non-maleficence, beneficence, autonomy, and justice. And you can see that um, there are many issues uh, that um, uh, confront us in terms of, of how to um, ethically uh, look at uh, the transplant practice in China. <clears throat> the uh, top left or top right um, picture there is of Jai Fu Huang, who is the Vice Minister of Health, at least as of right now. As many of you know, the China is currently undergoing its week-long transition of power that they do every decade. And uh, one really uh, doesn't know uh, at the end of the week uh, what positions uh, that the current people have or what new people will have in, in the future. So as of right now, as far as I know, he is still Vice Minister of Health. It was my understanding that he is friends with the presumed new leader of China, so hopefully he will still have a leading position in uh, health care in China as uh, he has truly been uh, the uh, very committed a uh, person that has been able to institute change um, with the transplant uh, uh, policies in China. <clears throat> and so in 2006 uh, at this WHO conference was the first time that uh, it was admitted by any uh, Chinese official that they indeed used executed prisoners as their donor source. And following that, a scientific article in 2007 also confirmed uh, that, uh, that, that practice. <clears throat> so, of course, the press focused on uh, the organs from executed prisoners, uh, a, reason, uh, a reasonable focus. Um, however, there were many other uh, problems, uh, ethical problems in regards to their transplant, transplant programs in China that dealt with uh, quality, lack of a database, <coughs> lack of transparency at every level, transplant tourism, and payment of organs. So we'll get the first uh, group uh, right out, uh, uh, out of the way right off the bat. Um, I and uh, the leaders of uh, China that I work with, uh, Jai Fu Huang and others, feel that uh, the utilization of executed prisoners is not consistent with what they want to have the transplant industry uh, and business in the future, and uh, understand that it violates human rights because death row inmates may feel oppressed uh, to become a donor. And this is a slide uh, from Jai Fu Huang. So this is not a slide that I've uh, interpreted um, as their feelings, this is uh, indeed 
um, how uh, Jai Fu and the leadership of China uh, feels. <clears throat> They also um, uh, agree that commercialization of transplant services is unethical and that they uh, recognize that uh, in the uh, period of time, certainly before 2007, it was rampant in the terms of uh, transplant tourism and payment of organs for organs, and uh, they uh, understand that that violates the principle of equity and the goal of establishing a harmonious society. Once again, a slide from Jai Fu, um, truly indicating that that's uh, what they believe. <clears throat> well, let's go back to 2006 and um, kind of examine exactly uh, where uh, transplantation was in China. Greater than 95% of the donors were, ex from, were from executed prisoners. Transplant tourism with payment of organs was widespread. Uh, it was somewhat stimulated by a legal system that encouraged compensation to the aggrieved party accounting uh, for at least 50% of the kidney transplants and 60% of the liver transplants performed in, in China at that time. Over 600 hospitals were performing solid organ transplants, and this was really uh, stimulated by the fact that during this period of time, the government pay payments to hospitals in an attempt to try to in increase the, the um, market uh, uh, for health care was decreasing their reimbursement to hospitals, and hospitals found that this was a, a what they thought was a reasonable way to increase their revenues was to uh, market to transplant tourism. Art Kaplan mentioned that uh, that there are websites, and there are still some out there today that uh, you can you can Google and uh, say come and get your your transplant uh, pay obviously, and it helps the revenues uh, of those hospitals and that there were no regulations governing transplant quality uh, throughout the whole country. So the first thing that, uh, that Jai Fu did was call a meeting of all the transplant centers, all 600 uh, plus of them, uh, to a meeting in Guangzhou and said, okay, uh, similar to actually what was happening uh, in the U.S. at that time, and that was with the CMS approval for transplant programs, um, everyone will have to reapply uh, and for the U.S. and, and uh, CMS was making all programs that, that currently had CMS approval reapply. In China, since there was no regulation, there was no approval from the, from the Ministry of Health, it was all the programs had to apply uh, to be able to subsequently continue to perform transplants. And they, they outlined the criteria in which each of the applications would be assessed, experience of the surgeon, volume center, institutional support, and field strength. <clears throat> And that, in the first step to try to um, to reform the executed prisoner aspect, um, that they recognize that the prisoners and the prisoner's family must sign consent. So the four principal areas of focus were the, to regulate quality, to regulate transplantable organs, to regulate transplant tourism, and to regulate the source and rights of the organ donor. So in regulating uh, quality, the... Um, uh, the ministry put out uh, the interim provisions on clinical application for the management of human organ transplantation, which addressed field strength, um, medical ethics, uh, medical and surgical expertise, as well as ICU care. In April of 06, they formed the Committee on Organ Transplantation, which developed clinical protocols to standardize practice. In November of 06, they had a National Summit of Transplant Centers to announce these changes. This is the uh, documents that came out, and these are the, obviously the English translations. Um, actually, uh, uh, we were provided these, these documents before the final English transla translation was uh, approved, but it really gave us a sense as to um, where and what they wanted to do. So the resulting uh, uh, changes in the practice of transplantation following these uh, regulations <clears throat> was that it uh, decreased the number of transplant centers from over 600 to approximately 150. And uh, this was done by those criteria that were mentioned before, so that um, they were done uh, fairly and equitably, and um, that over the time, uh, all 150 or so have been approved. Uh, during the process, uh, uh, some advantages of, of uh, working in a relatively authoritarian government is, is that they can uh, decide that they don't want to uh, accept or consider applications because they have enough and they don't need any more, and uh, that was indeed uh, done in uh, several cases. All, all provinces have at least one transplant center, though. 
These are some, these are the specific regulations uh, in regards to liver programs, and I put this up only as a as an example. There were uh, similar lists for other organ transplant uh, programs, and um, uh, it, it, the point of putting these these up there is is that these are indeed uh, criteria that would be similar in the U.S. and in fact are similar uh, in the U.S. in order to uh, have a CMS approved transplant program or even a third party approved transplant program. So volume, quality, outcomes, uh, institutional support, et cetera, were all part of the, um, the requirements for any transplant program in China. Enforcement is always a, a problem as, a, as I was talking with uh, Mr. McLean the other night um, who does a lot of uh, work in, in China as well. Uh, a real problem is the, the lack of rule of law, and that uh, permeates uh, all aspects of, of health care um, and certainly the practice of transplantation. And um, just because in China you develop a regulation, uh, you have buy-in from the government, you have buy-in from many of the transplant centers, but not all, of the transplant centers uh, doesn't mean that uh, everyone accepts and goes by those regulations. And in fact, there have been episodes, and I cite two here, but there have been others that have been brought to the uh, Ministry of Health's attention. And uh, once a thorough investigation has confirmed a, a transplant tourism uh, case, then uh, the punishment is laid, laid down. And that is um, essentially to uh, forbid that, that hospital to perform that type of transplant for a year uh, once an identified case of transplant tourism is, is identified. So uh, living donation um, has become an increasingly um, uh, frequent component of a donor source in China, uh, especially as the number of prisoner organ donations has decreased because of uh, regulations not only because of consenting as well, but also because of uh, the, uh, the national uh, review of uh, capital cases in China, uh, the number of, of organ donations, and I have no idea in reality about the number of executions, but certainly the number of, of organs available for transplantation has decreased. And um, the, although the, the Ministry of Health does not uh, actively support uh, the application of living donation feeling that the China, China's social structure is not well enough uh, established and supportive enough uh, to uh, support the long-term health care issues of potential living donors. Um, even though they do not actively uh, support it, uh, they have uh, uh, developed regulations surrounding uh, living donor transplantation in order to try to make it as safe as possible uh, for, those, for those patients. <clears throat> So um, from uh, all of this work, uh, uh, Jaifu, who is, is there looking much better than he did at that very harried WHO conference, um, and I and uh, a, a fellow colleague, uh, Eli Mao, um, have written a number of papers to document um, what the process is of how to improve uh, the uh, system of transplantation in China. One of those areas is a transplant registry, and uh, you see, in addition to me and, and Jaifu there, S.T. Fan, who um, has uh, been a long uh, friend of mine. He is based in, in Hong Kong. He's chairman of surgery now in Hong Kong and uh, was a visitor um, at UCLA when I was a fellow uh, for a long period of time. And, um, and he uh, has developed uh, the liver transplant registry for all of China. And um, Haibo, who is uh, there here in the corner, um, is, um, is really the, the hands-on guy for that uh, project and uh, has uh, really helped keep uh, the data uh, flowing and in good shape. And this is the, you can access this uh, registry online. Um, the data you cannot access, you have to have a user code and password. Uh, so that's a level of transparency that we in the, in the States have that, that China has not yet um, uh, come to, whereas in the U.S., uh, anyone can go to, to the appropriate website and find out the survival uh, statistics, uh, wait list numbers, et cetera, of any transplant program in the U.S. Uh, China is not yet to that level of transparency, but um, they clearly have um, a registry that is uh, uh, moving on. And if you, if you can see here, there's, uh, you know, the top quality programs. Uh, in, in certain years that are right there that if, if you do have the, the access, you can get those quality metrics um, 
within the, within the system. We have not been totally successful. Um, we had a, a meeting about brain death um, uh, uh, several years ago, uh, and it was not successful. Um, we uh, recognized that um, it was a standard across uh, the world in many countries, not all countries, and we, from a medical point of view, um, we were able to develop the appropriate criteria for China with the, uh, the acceptable diagnostics that are available in most hospitals, but uh, was not able to get buy-in from the Ministry of Justice, um, and so uh, at the current time, uh, China still does not have a brain death law. So um, this was just one of the, uh, the transplant organ uh, uh, council meetings that I was uh, invited to, so that, to point out that there's outside review, it's not just a bunch of Chinese people. The other aspect, inter interesting aspect of that, the bigger picture is you see some military uh, uh, people, and this was the first meeting of the, of the transplant, uh, organ, count, uh, organ transplant council that, um, that uh, had the um, cooperation of, uh, of the military in, in terms of trying to develop a national system. So, uh, whereas uh, Dr. Kaplan certainly mentioned that the uh, military hospital system and the Ministry of Health hospital system are, are, are separate and not um, uh, organized or administered under the same umbrella, um, in transplantation, we are starting, and I'm not to say that, that it's totally integrated yet, but at least there's starting to be the uh, uh, assumption that eventually they'll all be uh, moved together. So one of the questions that we had as we wanted to develop an organ donor system was how do we develop a voluntary citizen-based uh, deceased organ donor pool when uh, we don't have a brain death law, which is the... the the principal uh, method of, of organ donors in the U.S., as we've uh, heard about yesterday, uh, despite the, the issues that may be about declaration of, of death um, in either brain death or in uh, uh, DCDs. <clears throat> so uh, this is kind of showing a Venn diagram of how we view organ uh, donors in the U.S. and mostly throughout the, the rest of the world. You have the, the, the blue uh, circle of brain death and you have the the pink uh, circle of donation after circulatory or cardiac death, and those contribute to a total, total uh, deceased donor pool. <clears throat> what we did was rethink this um, uh, paradigm and redefined uh, deceased organ donation for China. And what we saw was that we could incorporate the brain dead uh, donor into the DCD donor, not uh, declaring them brain dead, uh, but allowing them to uh, proceed down a DCD donor pathway uh, clinical algorithm so that they would, uh, their, their life support measures would be um, eliminated just as, as any DCD donor. They would obviously die quicker, uh, whereas the, the, the standard DCD donor has perhaps some level of respiratory drive and some uh, blood pressure uh, responsiveness. Uh, the DCD donor, I mean, the brain dead donor does not, and so that once they go down the pathway, they will actually uh, presumably die quicker uh, than the standard DCD, and we're able to get usable organs from the whole group of, of uh, potential donors rather than just throwing up our hands and saying uh, that we, we, we failed. And so um, we've defined what this, uh, this pilot program of, uh, of uh, donors in China would be, and we published that in Lancet, and then um, we um, um, had that demonstration project going from April of 11 to uh, January of, of 12. It uh, essentially developed 26 OPOs, as they really didn't exist before. Um, it, from that period of time, there were 292 organs uh, that were transplanted in 31 different hospitals. And 50% uh, of those um, organs were, uh, were procured in the last six months of the project. Now it, the number of organs from this uh, system is now up to 546 from 207 uh, donors and uh, uh, transplanted um, uh, from those donors were from 16 different re regions. The next aspect of this uh, donor system that we're trying to develop is that of allocation. So we looked at uh, around the world at allocation policies and uh, developed a, a Chinese-specific um, system. And um, this is how the uh, Chinese log on to this system and uh, then identify uh, the 
um, potential, uh, these were the, the uh, transparency and equity. And then if you look on that, this is actually a, a uh, screenshot of, uh, of the donor, of the recipient potential candidates for a specific organ, uh, just as we would see in the US. And the uh, allocation goes from top down, just like it does in the US. When I, I was at the, um, at the meeting that uh, announced the results of the pilot pr project, um, there was a very moving presentation by the father of a donor. And I had always assumed that the organ donor system would really be driven by the younger people in the, the bigger cities who understood uh, the, the uh, importance of organ donation and the gift of life and the gift of organs. But in fact, uh, this is a, the story of a, of, a, of a man, a migrant farm worker, who's, uh, whose son uh, was in, likely, in all likelihood brain dead uh, from, from a traumatic injury. And um, he uh, agreed to have, to allow his, his son's organs to be procured and transplanted. And um, if there's any question about whether um, that feeling is uh, of, of gifting and of donation um, is culture specific, it is not. Um, this man had every one of the emotions that every one of us would have if our, if our son or daughter had died and we were able to provide a gift of life to someone else. And um, even though I don't speak uh, Chinese, Chinese uh, after many of the trips that I've, I've gone, I knew every word he was saying and I felt every emotion that he was, he was able to transmit. And it was uh, a very moving part of that whole meeting that really shows that it can work in, in China. <clears throat> so what have we uh, seen already in the, in, in the last uh, six years or so? Um, from the social aspect, in, in 2005 and before, it was really, when I talked with, with transplant professionals, they felt there was nothing wrong with executing prisoners and using them as donors. The transplant uh, tourism was good for the system, and the, the Chinese will never embrace uh, living donor transplantation. And in 2012, we've seen dramatic changes in those things, and, and they are listed there. <clears throat> so. Um, these are some of the things that we have done in, in the last six years. Uh, I think the most important, and that is, is we've improved quality. Uh, we've we've uh, addressed many of the, the ethical issues. We don't have 100% uh, penetrance of this, uh, but uh, we are making uh, good strides. What are our goals for the next five years? Making a voluntary deceased donor system robust enough to allow elimination of prisoners as organ donors, to improve enforcement of regulations, and to have on-site uh, audits of transplant activity so that uh, the, the uh, enforcement is e even easier to get to. So once again, thank you very much for the, for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you.